and welcome back to Bella's Books. My name is Isabel and today I'm going to be reviewing The Book of Strange New Things by Michael Faber and how beautiful is this cover. Literally, I had no idea who Michael Faber was. The only reason I picked this up in Waterstones was because of how beautiful and shiny the cover was. Um, so I rated this on, um, on Goodreads. I gave it a three star but I would honestly give it like a 3.9 if I could because it was so close to a four star rating. It's just like there are a couple of things that kind of didn't make it. It's so windy, let me close the window. There were just a couple of things that like didn't make it perfect for me. So I'll read you the Goodreads blurb because I think it's more detailed than the one on the back of the book. It begins with Peter, a devoted man of faith, a Christian, as he is called to the mission of a lifetime, one that takes him galaxies away from his wife, B. Peter becomes immersed in the mysteries of an astonishing new environment, overseen by an enigmatic corporation known only as USIC. His work introduces him to a seemingly friendly native population struggling with a dangerous illness and hungry for Peter's teachings. His Bible is their book of strange new things. But Peter is rattled when B's letters from home become increasingly desperate. Typhoons and earthquakes are devastating whole countries and governments are crumbling. B's faith, once the guiding light of their lives, begins to falter. While Peter is reconciling the needs of his congregation with the desires of his strange new employer, B is struggling for survival. Their trials lay bare a profound meditation on faith, love tested beyond endurance, and our responsibility to those closest to us. So I really enjoyed this book. And once I got into it, I literally couldn't put it down. It's writing is so immersive. And it just like, you don't get jolted out of the narrative the way you do in some books. So yeah, I just really couldn't put it down. I did read other people's reviews because I do like to do that. I do like to see what other people think of stuff. And I found that a lot of people were saying that um, the premise itself, the story is quite implausible. But I think that's quite unfair to the novel because it's a sci-fi novel. And part of reading that genre is believing the unbelievable. And even if you don't like sci-fi, I'd recommend that you read this book because it's about so many other things. It's about faith, it's about communication, addiction, alienation, relationships. It's just, it's really rich. I feel like anyone, like you, you could read this after watching my video and just get something new out of it that I didn't even think of. It's, it's so good. Um, so an interesting fact that I discovered while I was researching this book is that the author is an atheist, yet the main character is a devout Christian. And if I'd had to guess, I would have said that the author was a Christian because the character is so well written. And it's not like an inspirational Christian story, so you're led to believe that it will be, but it actually has quite a hopeless ending. So as a character, Peter isn't judged for being a Christian by anyone really. It's not like the author's trying to say that it's bad to be a Christian, but he doesn't also appear to be kind of saying, trying to convert the reader, which I don't know, there's an interesting kind of dynamic of neutrality there. Um, so the book is most, is above, is above all about alienation. And Peter kind of slowly becomes alienated from every aspect of who he is. And eventually all the new things that he's experiencing, he becomes alienated by that because he gets kind of torn between his past and his present. So he's alienated from the earth by distance and he's alienated from earth because he's not experiencing his downfall like B is. Um, he's alienated by language. At the beginning, he's alienated by the language of the Oasins and their behavior. But by the end of the novel, he can barely communicate in English and he seems to be struggling with his own native language. So it's kind of like all these different alienations come together to alienate Peter from who he actually is. And he ends the novel as a completely different man than who he started it as, although he appears to be trying to redeem that. And I think a big part of this alienation stems from his inability to communicate properly with anyone and it just kind of deteriorates. So it kind of makes you think about long distance relationships and how difficult they are. Um, what I didn't like about it, and this is why it's 3.9, not a four star rating, in my opinion, is it's depressingly sad. The writing is hopeless. And it's kind of like Peter's already lost what he has on Earth. And he loses what he has on his new planet by reaching back for what he's already lost. And so the ending was quite ambiguous. There didn't seem to be any positivity. And I just kind of wanted more from it. Like I wanted to find something else out. I wanted to know what happened after the end almost. It just felt a bit unfinished. So that was the one thing I didn't love about it. But 
I, I did, I, I did, I did, I did really enjoy it. Like the themes of alienation and kind of his presentation as like, he's just, his character development is excellent. And you just learn so much about an entirely new culture, but there's also kind of the dystopian earth, what's happening on earth element. So all aspects of the story are interesting and have plot basically. There's like, there's no perspective where you kind of get bored reading about it. You always look forward to every new scene because you know that something interesting is going to be happening. So yeah, I just think it makes you want to think about things. Um, it makes you kind of consider like what long distance relationships can do to someone, um, the importance of communication, stuff like that. Um, I did read this theory actually on Goodreads. Um, if I can find the review again, I'll link it. But it was like this idea because Peter's actually a recovered drug addict. And it was like this concept that USIC is actually rehab and the Oasis Oasians are, um, his encounters with them are kind of his relapses. And like the, there's this idea where like every time he returns to USIC, he's worse than he was than when he left. So whether or not that's actually intentional or whether it's just kind of supposed to be a parallel towards his addiction and just like thinking about how like your past can affect your present and stuff like that. I'm not sure, but it, it, did, it, did, it did make me think it was really interesting. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this book and I really cannot wait to read more by Michael Faber. The other thing, the last thing I want to say about this is I found it quite difficult to imagine what um, the aliens looked like. But I managed to find um, this guy, Jason Courtney, who has created kind of like lots of different art about the um, aliens. And oh, it's quite sinister, it's a bit scary. Um, so yeah, he's created art and I will like, maybe I'll insert some pictures. I'm not sure if I know how to do that, but um, I'll definitely link him down below. Um, and you should look at that if you're going to read the book because it really helped me kind of visualize um what was happening because you've kind of got this other culture which is quite hard to think quite hard to imagine in your mind i don't know if maybe i just suck at imagining things but yeah um so yeah thank you so much for watching this video and i hope it inspires you to go read this book and let me know what you thought about the ending if you did read it because yeah i just was a bit kind of give me more so yeah have a great day thank you so much for watching Please like, comment, subscribe, and all those good things. Bye, see you later.